Hi everyone, happy Earth Day. So I thought today I would show you how to do this really cool moss type of vase. So I'll give you some of the things that I did just to prepare this and I, I did it ahead of time because it did take me a little bit of time. So what I did, if you recall, when I was walking my dog Obi, I went out to the woods and I found this gorgeous moss. And it's just, like I said, out in the woods, by the water. I used like a little spatula just to kind of lift it and it, it worked great and it just came right off. So then what I did is I took just a straight cylinder style vase, just a plain old vase. And I started adding the moss in different kind of patterns and I just used a glue gun. So how many of you have a glue gun? We all have glue guns, right? So we um, just have all this beautiful moss tucked around and inside the vase, I did some chicken wire. I can show you, I do have some water in it. But you can see, oh, I'm dripping all the water, sorry. So anyways, I put the chicken wire in and that's gonna be my grid system. Because once you put the blooms in and the stems in, sometimes they just kind of flop. So that grid system gives you kind of that like extra insurance so your flowers will kind of stay in place once you sit. You can also use a flower frog. You can go outside and get some grapevine and you can just kind of twirl it in your vase. Or I have actually did a grid system on top with some tape. So you could do that too. All right, so I'm gonna put my gloves on because I went out to the woods also in my backyard and got some beautiful flowering branches. Look how gorgeous these are. And oh, my favorite scissors, I love these. They are so strong, they cut anything. They're on our website. If you're looking for them, they're amazing. So the, um, I'm gonna give you some just um, pointers when you've got branches outside. You wanna make sure you kind of have a bucket of water next to you because once you cut them, they start just kind of uh, closing up. So I'm gonna give it a nice cut. And with my scissors, I'm gonna also go up and make another slice up the middle. And sometimes I even make like an X. So I do a double cut. What I love about these branches is for me, they set the architecture for your arrangement. They just start giving it that really cool shape. So you can see I have one kind of going that way. Oh, look at this one. This one has like a really kind of cool. So I'm also gonna cut this and then do my other cut and kind of get this into the vase as well. So I'm actually fine with it kind of going wild. I might trim this one, just kind of move it a little bit. It's so sweet. Okay, then I have this big one. Yes, 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 yes. I'm gonna trim it just a little. It's a little on the aggressive side. So um, the other day I was, I was going through Pinterest and I came across Ina Garten's garden in, um, in New York. I think she lives in near Sag Harbor or something in Long Island. And it's such a cute story because when she moved there, she was desperate to have a vegetable garden for all her cooking. And the next door neighbor had all this land, this farmland. And she just, oh God, I can't see you. <laughs> okay, hold on. So anyway, she started um, asking her next door neighbor if she could buy the property. Hold on a second, get some greenery. This greenery is just gorgeous. I thought it played nicely off the moss. It's called Spring Ride, can you see? I just think it's so, so pretty. So I'm going to strip it a little bit, give it a little cut, and I'm gonna start tucking it in little sections. And just kind of have it flow. Like I said, your branches are your architecture. It's your base, it's your kind of your, your plan. And then you can see the form take place. Like I'm gonna follow the lines, which are so, so pretty. This one actually has some like little beautiful white flowers on top. So I, I might just like, again, tuck these in. So I like starting with my branches and then I like starting with my foliage, my green. So I'm gonna get a few more. And then I promise I'll finish the story about Ina Garten and her garden because I think I'm as obsessed 
as the rest of you when it comes to gorgeous gardens. Here's another type of greenery. This is called Hawk. I know it's not the most pretty name, but it's actually a really pretty foliage. I like it because it has like this very delicate petal or leaf. I'm just gonna clean my stems because we don't want the greens in the water. Okay. I hope I get to see you all by the time this is finished. <laughs> it's so crazy. Okay. I'm gonna do the front, a nice piece here in the front. Okay, so it is kind of big, but I really like that. I'm trying to move this back a little bit. I think we need a little bit more foliage coming off the sides. There's another one. So Ina finally talked her neighbor into letting her purchase the land adjacent to her. And what she did with this is she built her studio, which now um, is like the studio for her TV show, her cooking show. And then she also did a garden as promised. And she, guess who she called? Guess who she called to help her with her garden? Martha Stewart. And she said, you have to hire this amazing um, designer. I'm gonna maybe take this over here and, and maybe just lower at this point, just so you can see it a little bit better. And Ina and this girl, this woman, who is this amazing landscape designer, built the framework for her protege garden, which in French basically means vegetable garden, <laughs> which I'm desperate to have one. Okay, so see again, I'm just really adding a lot of the greenery and the architecture to this piece. Another really pretty piece. And I promise when I'm finished, I will take a, a picture of this for y'all. Because I know it's super up close right now and it's probably really hard to see. Okay. Sometimes I bend and I just have like a little here and there. Oh, these branches are so gorgeous. As I always say, you never know what you find outside sometimes. I find moss, I find flowering branches. Oh, you know what I have growing in my garden right now? The most amazing Dutch tulips. And it's funny, last year I had all the deer just love my tulips. So I decided to put it in my pool area where there's a fence. So guess what? Guess who's getting, getting my um, tulips this year? Not all of them, but a few. Rabbits. The rabbits are like all over my stuff. I, I've really been like, seriously, <laughs> I guess the deer last year and this year, the rabbits. So if you guys have any suggestions, please send them my way. Not that I don't love the little bunnies. I just want them to eat something else. Not my beautiful tulips. That took me forever to plant bulbs. Okay, I'm gonna start adding some flowers now. Sorry, hope you can see me. Um, these are called Butterfly ranunculus. Oh my goodness. Again, you know how I love my bouncy flowers. So we're going to add a lot of these. Just going to add the structure over here. And I'm going to add some over here. Oh, look how just so gorgeous these are. Now, what's interesting about this arrangement, you're gonna see the vase is probably a good 10 inches, and then I always make my arrangements twice the size of my container. Um, you want that because you don't want this really large container and this really small container and this really small floral. So you really wanna balance it out so it looks aesthetically correct. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> I moved the camera back too. Okay, 
So I'm starting the framework for my arrangement. I've added my branches, I've added my butterfly ranunculus, which is in a really pale pink, gorgeous. So again, starting my structure. I'm now gonna get some larger face, or I call my face flower, to tuck into little nooks and crannies where I see like some holes as you go. So I'm really loving these peonies. So I'm gonna add these in to the lower part. See I'm just tucking them in, sinking them in, and it really brings your eye in and then it brings your eye out. So it's really important to do in your arrangements. Sometimes I like to group them together. So I'm gonna get another one. Here's my other peony. And kind of just tuck it in alongside. So one is really tucked in and one is kind of over here. I do have one other thing I want to show you. Lilac. So these are native lilac. And I think there's some rules of thumb with lilac. And a lot of folks tell me they wilt so easily, which they do. So a couple tricks that you can do. Again, when you're cutting these, say in your yard or wherever you find them, you wanna have a bucket of water next to you. And as soon as you make that first cut, get it into the water. Another thing you wanna do when you bring your lilacs is you know, keep them in the water, don't walk around your yard, get them into the water and then get them into a cool place, not in the hot sun. And then what I do, now these are just my tricks. I, I tell everybody I, I'm not, you know, the end all with all the answers to floral design and gardens, but I do like to educate when I feel things have worked for me. So what I notice is when you have a lot of foliage on your, your lilac, all of the absorption of water goes to hydrate that, which is important, but you really want all of the hydration to go to the blooms. So I kind of trimmed it out. I also am going to do that effect again, where I cut it, and I make a double cut, and then I tuck it right into my bouquet. So make a cut, and then make another cut. Oh, these are just gorgeous. This one has a lot of foliage, so we're gonna cut a lot of this off, just because we don't want all the effort to go into, again, the greenery. This is just gorgeous. I love some of it trailing off the front. It's hard to design backwards. <laughs> And see how it just kind of complements right in front of the peonies? The other thing I like to do, this is a rose called quicksand. And it's a very, I want to say a very muted, it's not a cream colored rose, and it's not a pink. It's in this very taupey color. I just love it. And as you know, I always take off my guard petals. It's the petals that kind of protect the rose. The other thing I love to do with these quicksand is I actually bend the petals back a little bit just to make them appear almost like a garden rose. It's just a trick I learned along the way. And it's so nice to just have this rose kind of, look how open it looks now. It just gives you that kind of like very lushness look. I'm gonna have a few of these tucked around the arrangement as well. taking off some guard petals and then I am going to again make them so lush. I love tucking a few in together just so they're kind of complementing each other. These colors are just gorgeous. Another thing I got in my yard is Pyrrhus which is this really beautiful bush, it grows and it um, comes out in the spring. It has this very floaty kind of white little flower. I just love it. It's one of my favorites. So we're gonna kind of go over here, attach a few of these in. 
They're just so pretty. Their stems are a little wonky, but <laughs> we're gonna straighten them. Oh, so, so pretty. And it just floats, just floats nicely. Again, just tucking them in. So pretty. So of course I'm gonna add roses on the other side as well. We're not gonna, we're gonna balance. The other thing I just I'm obsessed with is these anemones. Oh, look at these. So all these textures and all of these different types of shape flowers really, really bring interest to your bouquet. So don't be afraid to add all these like really cool textures and anemones are just one of those, oh my God, flowers. Oh, love these. So we're going to maybe kind of ink it over here. Make sure you get all your stems in the water too. So what I love about this is, again, it's supposed to be very organic. It's supposed to be very loose and airy. I'm going to keep adding in touches here and there. You're going to see little holes. I love adding more at the end some really delicate flowers too. Like these fringe tulips. Oh my God, are these stunning? Stunning, stunning, stunning. A trick with these, I like to take off the leaves because they get very droopy in the arrangement. So I tend to take all my leaves off. And then what I might do is kind of tuck them on the higher side as well. Have them shining through. Oh, so cute. So I'm gonna add tuck little frilled tulips here and there too. So I hope you follow along. And at the end, I promise I'll post a picture of this. Happy flowering, everyone. I hope this keeps you inspired to go out to your garden and create some beauty, especially on Earth Day. Mother Nature, she's doing her thing, and we are so grateful for it. Take care, everyone.